So who are you banned on? I know you're banned on FTMO. <laughs> yeah. right? I think recently bespoke. I'm not sure I can uh, talk about that because That's the lawsuit true. threats and everything. If this company scams people, mm -hmm. if they do that to me, I'm pretty sure they do it to other people. You run a, a million dollar company, you go talk about my wife that she's in university and she can't trade. Mm -hmm. What is that? Welcome everyone to the Words of Wisdom podcast. We're back in Dubai. We're on tour. We have so many episodes being recorded this month. But to start things off, we have a very special guest, someone who I've been speaking to for months and months and months, even before the podcast uh, went the way it did. Uh, and we're joined by the one, the only Mr. Andrew NFX, right? Yeah, that's my that's uh, brand name. Yeah, thanks go. for having me, Riz. Yeah, it's been a long time since mm -hmm. we first chatted. I know the podcast was relatively... Not that big. Mm -hmm. You got big in a few months. Yeah, I'm glad you still wanted me on. No, hundred percent. Even because when you know when people grow, they tend to forget. But uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Hope we're gonna have some great conversation. No, definitely, it's my pleasure. I know you reside in uh, Romania, right? Yeah, and that's Bucharest, close Romania. to the UK. But we decided to meet here instead. Uh, yeah, it was a very tough process. Mm -hmm. Just going London, Nottingham, I uh, was. It's too much. So Dubai I decided to just come here, yeah. That's it, Dubai, yeah. yeah. But like how we like to start things off is I'm sure there's a lot of people who know you because by now you have done a lot of interviews um, with different prop firms, etc. Yeah, sure. Um, but just a brief story of how you got to where you are today and then we'll just take it from there. All right. So first started trading back when I was maybe 16. I'm 24 now. Mm -hmm. So 16, 17, first discover trading was uh, binary options. Okay. If you ever heard of them, mm -hmm. you know, the IQ option thing. Mm -hmm was kind of a gambling thing but uh, yeah also a, a little bit of background i was a professional basketball player yeah i can so see ever that since now. Was, yeah for, I was, for those uh, who don't know he's like seven foot tall he's yeah, massive yeah i'm very big so <laughs> basketball in uh, romania played when i was around 16 i was playing for um senior like first league mm -hmm. also national team so i was a very um, good player let's say top 15 of uh, in the country uh then i had a very nasty accident i broke my back oh wow so um, yeah, after that, uh, just you know, staying in bed for a few months, couldn't move. So I had to, I don't know, discover stuff. So I started reading psychology books, wanted to get into entrepreneurship, and uh, yeah, discover trading, binary options. Didn't really do much then. Didn't have money, but I did make a few hundred dollars, let's say, so not much. And yeah, then I started another business, e-commerce stuff like that. Did some money, and then got back into trading through the initial route, the, u the usual route of Instagram gurus, mm -hmm. you know, fi find it there. And um, yeah, ever since then, I just started to grow to this started level. From there. How, in terms of an accident, was that through basketball? Yeah, basketball. Yeah. 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 So what was that like for you? Obviously, you know, you were playing at a very high level, yeah. have this accident. Of course, you know, at the time, I imagine your, your goals were aligned in that you know, direction. Mm. They had to change. Yeah, most think so, but not really because um, Europe, Europe is good for for sports, basketball. Mm -hmm. uh, Romania is not good for sports. Okay. Like you didn't really have a future. Okay. My salary was around I don't know five hundred euros per month, mm -hmm. so not that much, right? And um, yeah, wasn't really my goal to go there. But I really liked. I don't know, it's just you grow up with something, you mm -hmm. just keep doing it until uh, I don't know it's over. Uh, but the the accident did change quite a lot in my mentality because mm -hmm. also. For those who don't know, people who play sports don't really have the best mentality when it comes to life, especially Romania, because it's a poor country. Mm -hmm. So um, staying alone, uh, then looking online for stuff, reading, really changed my mentality. And when I tried to go back after three months to go through the recovery, uh, something clicked in me and I was like, this is not fit for me because I, w I was seeing everyone around me, you know, how they think. And I, I wasn't, I kind of grew past that. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it was tough. I still have problems, but um, sports really helps you in life. Mm -hmm. uh, the discipline that you get, because mm -hmm. man, practicing like three times a day, it's not easy. It's not easy. And then having games, got to stay consistent, discipline, sleep, eat well, all, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I think that was a very major key in my success. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. And, you know, a lot of people can take that on board and you see that across whether it's people from the military, or people who, as you say, like high level sports, that yeah. level of discipline that's instilled with them really helps to translate into trading. Yeah, does. No doubt there's probably uh, many lessons to still learn <laughs> when going into the trading journey. You mentioned though, you came across trading the usual way, you know, sort yeah. of like Instagram uh, gurus, etc. So how did you overcome that? Because a lot of people, obviously you look at that and then you see a certain image 
and then there'll be a process of you having to sort of yeah. get rid of the image and focus on the skill so what was that like for obviously you? at f- first year i was focused on making money mm-hmm. getting rich quick seems like seemed like such an easy way mm-hmm. right uh, i think that's the same for everyone right um, but the way i overcame it i think because i tried to replicate mm-hmm. so me as a person i always try to replicate successful people mm-hmm. so i was looking at a successful um person individual and i was trying to not replicate their success but replicate what they're doing Mm -hmm. right day to day Uh, again discipline and consistency right so i was replicating what they were doing on charts off charts uh, discipline all that but it just wasn't working right Um, they were winning trades i was losing trades Mm -hmm. but doing the same thing so that's when i kind of figured it's more marketing uh, especially since you know you buy some services and they don't even answer to you anymore stuff like that so mm-hmm. you kind of understand it's just a business for them right it's just marketing so yeah after a year year and a half struggling with that mm-hmm. just decided to put my head down on the charts just me and the charts and try to figure out what to do yeah so more that sort of solitude focused on yourself yeah uh, would you say a year year and a half um the process since yeah. i started yeah yeah and, and after that it took me like two years to just to nail it down that what was it like the uh, focusing on yourself because i've obviously as you can imagine had a lot of people on the podcast and the ones who really have excelled they talk about having a moment like that where they separate themselves they stop yeah. listening to other people focusing on other people they focus on themselves for some say six months some say a year some say longer um but that that solitude and that sort of silence is really what accelerated their growth yeah and um uh, again i saw that pattern successful people so i replicated it but uh, after I stopped playing basketball, so that was around 17, 18 years old. Um, I was, ve- of course, I was very popular in my country, playing uh, at a high level. So that's when I decided to cut everything off. Mm-hmm. So I deleted all my socials, changed my number, basically just restarted by myself. Moved mm-hmm. to a new play- place, or rented a place, even if I wasn't really that successful. Mm-hmm. I decided to go at it myself. And that really grows you like being alone trying to figure things out not having enough money maybe for rent or food Mm -hmm. that changes you and uh, yeah that's a big key of success but again i saw that in successful people so i tried to replicate it Mm -hmm. try to go through the through the trenches you know to definitely is that something you still to do to this day because obviously now you've reached a level of success i mean yeah i still don't have friends (laughs) (laughs) so um just because i again country romania is not a good country uh, in terms of people Mm -hmm. they try to bite your hand stuff like Mm -hmm. that so uh, i decided not to just not give my trust and friendship to to anyone and um yeah just uh, me and my wifey pushing through life and uh, yeah i don't need anyone (laughs) fair enough fair enough we'll come back to that for sure and you know in regards to your journey then so what were there any key moments that or key things that you may have learned or or realized that helped you to then accelerate in terms of trading or just um like strategy wise or psychology anything yeah Any, anything in that period where you weren't winning to okay. then obviously starting to win yeah yeah um definitely it's the thing that really because again when you first start trading you want to make money mm-hmm. right but that wasn't really working so i decided to just let's focus on the right things right so i tried to focus on your discipline and consistency mm-hmm. so i took the same thing from playing sports try to replicate it into trading so i only focused every single day on discipline and consistency so um waking up same time sitting on the charts, uh, same time, same hours, trading the same pairs, using the same time frames, all that kind of stuff. So I just focused on that, doing that every single day. And mm-hmm. I, of course, I started with one pair, just did that all over, all over um, again, same day. Uh, dif- uh, I mean, every single day doing the same yeah. stuff. Yeah, and that really accelerated. So just built the sort of momentum over time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because once you do the same thing, mm-hmm. if you focus on the input, so if you do the same thing every single day, uh, at some point, it's going to come back. Yeah, right? yeah. No, definitely. And in terms of your journey then, when was it that you start? Did you go personal account first or did you go prop firm straight away? First, yeah, I did personal account because uh, back then there wasn't, was just only FTMO, I think, mm-hmm. uh, which now I can trade with, but <laughs> that's a different story. Yeah, uh, yeah, just did personal, personal account. Everyone was uh, advertising personal accounts, but they were advertising offshore brokers. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you probably know some that <laughs> were very popular that day, um, those times. Yeah, just did some personal trading, try to, I think it was more not really uh, consistency based because obviously if you have a low balance, you kind of yeah. need to push the risk. But uh, yeah, 
I, it worked, right? I did some money and then slowly I yeah, started to go into the prop firm space mm -hmm. for capital. And so when did you first come across like the evaluation companies? What was it that sort of caught your eye first? Uh, like I said, it was just FTMO. Yeah. Some influencers started promoting it mm -hmm. as a way to, again, gain capital. Mm -hmm. Of course, start, starting out, you don't really understand how they work, right? Uh, that they're most likely made against you. Um, but yeah, uh, that was the, the first company. Uh, tried a few evaluation with, uh, evaluations with them, and bro, it was a, a whole different whole different thing because you have very strict risk management rules. Yeah. So if you're not really disciplined, then you can never... Uh, pass it or mm -hmm. get a life account yeah definitely and was there anything you had to change when going from that say the personal account with low balance to obviously trying to then pass these yeah the thing that challenges? is just mental right it's mm -hmm. just psychology because you only have 10 percent risk mm -hmm. on a on a personal account you have a way more uh risk in terms of percentage mm -hmm. um yeah i had to change the way i think but again, at first, I wasn't really successful with them. I was just failing. Yes. Even if I was profitable on my own accounts, I was failing the evaluations. Because it's also the balance, right? Because mm -hmm. it, it messes with your head. But uh, yeah, I had to change quite a few things when it comes to risk management, mm -hmm. discipline, and um, also try to not to rush it. Even if back then there was minimum trading days and max trading days. You only yeah, had 30 days, 36 mm -hmm. days. So it was a different story. Also, the lower profit split, you remember? 75%. Yeah. yeah. A lot have changed, yeah. <laughs> Things get more competitive, you know. Yeah. And um, was there anything specific? So you mentioned there, obviously, you had to change some things. Was there anything that comes to mind of you know exactly what you had to change? Not really. Just uh, trying to lower the risk, mm -hmm. um, half percent, one percent max, and um, of course the trading days really makes you trade more. Mm -hmm. So um, I was I tried to change that also coming from a personal account where you don't really trade much try to make trades obviously using uh, half a percent risk to reach a 10 percent target that's quite a lot of uh, mm -hmm. of trades but uh, yeah that's that's the thing i, I need to change definitely yeah. and you said you lost quite a lot before obviously starting yeah. to pass do you know how many how many accounts you may have lost uh, i think it was five six something mm -hmm. around the, along those lines yeah it's not too bad and then in regards to account sizes you know, yeah. did you go straight into the sort of larger size accounts or did you uh, yeah i think my first scale? account was just 100k yeah mm -hmm. that was the the max they were they were offering back then yeah mm -hmm. so you started on the higher accounts and yeah just because you just gotta go straight to it i'm <laughs> a very straight to it person so okay. i don't really like to go small i'd rather just jump and then mm -hmm. see what happens try and work it out yeah try to work it out yeah and then of course from there then as yeah. i said like at the beginning you've done many interviews you know with many of the uh, companies and you max funded with a lot of companies as well. I think yeah. what was the highest amount you had in total? 5.5 .5 million yeah. dollars, yeah. So what was that like, obviously, going through from trading a small account to then scaling to such a high level? The skilled challenge is finally here. Enjoy the lowest profit targets in the industry through our skilled challenge, which is only requiring a 6% profit target. Yes, you heard that right. Not only that, but enjoy 85% profit split as well as a 125% challenge free refund. All part of the best product on the market. You get to choose your drawdown between 8 or 10% for our toggle option. So you choose how much drawdown you'd like. Take advantage of the skilled challenge today. Let's take a break for a minute there, guys, because I want to tell you about our other sponsor, Trade Zeller. Now, Trade Zeller is something I only wished I had during my journey because I would have saved myself so much time and more importantly, money. Because Trade Zeller is the greatest automated journaling software on the market. That's right, automated. All you have to do is connect your MetaTrader 4, MetaTrader 5, and it will pull up all of your data with all your statistics. It goes so in depth from obviously your losses, the days, the times. It allows you to bar replay so you can actually see that trade as if it was live. Absolutely incredible. It's an absolute game changer for everyone's trading journey. Without data, how can you make a statistical edge? I went through so much time without collecting data, without journaling. And why was that? Because most people find journaling very tedious when in reality, why not have it automated and all done for you? All you do is just add the notes. As part of TradeZella, 
you also have playbooks. So if you have different entry drills, you can list them all out so you can categorize your trades. TradeZella is for everyone, whether you trade options, whether you trade Forex, whether you trade prop firms, or even just your own personal account. It is here to revolutionize the trading journey. Make sure you click the link in the description below and use the code RIZ10 for 10% off. Go take a look at the link in the description. Let's get back to the episode. Uh, well, obviously it's a big change, but that's years of work mm -hmm. that doesn't just happen overnight. And um, there's more backstory to that because after FTMO there was funding talent. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you can go, we can go through that a little bit because that was maybe the biggest jump, okay. right? Because coming from, let's say, 100k account FTMO, then uh, funding talent came in. And they, I think their max capital was 300k or even 400k. <coughs> Don't oh, really remember. 300, yeah. 300? 300, yeah. yeah, 300. So it was a big jump yeah. passing, uh, obviously when they introduced the evaluation model, mm -hmm. similar. And that's when I started to make some uh, real money, like mm. bigger money, right? Uh, I think my biggest payout was around 50, 50,000 just on them. And uh, yeah, after that, after that payout, I had a bigger month mm -hmm. uh, trading gold. I made, I still have the screenshots. I think it was around 80 something thousand. Wow. Mm -hmm. I was just trading gold back then. Uh, this was after, I think, right when COVID was happening, I think mm -hmm. 2020. Around there, yeah. Yeah, so it was very volatile and very, was moving quite a lot. So um, yeah, I made, had a good month, was waiting for the payout and then uh, you know what happened, so. It closed out because of you as well. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man, there were other people doing more than that. Mm. But well, I feel yeah. like, uh, do you remember the conditions? Because I remember I, I was trading at the same time, I got uh, max funded with Conditions them. in terms of? In terms broker? of like, you know, uh, Obviously, all the prop firms use demo, right? Yeah, Simulated yeah, demo, accounts, yeah. right? But they were renowned for having no slippage, no commissions, yeah, yeah, yeah. And low spreads, and therefore everyone could. Some people were gaming the system, so yeah, like exactly. they're cheating. But there were people like yourself, maybe, and, and a lot of other traders who were trading fine. Yeah. But, you know, they made large profits at the same time, and it came to a point where because the conditions were so good, yeah, I know, I know. they couldn't pay them out. Yeah, no. Did you, do you remember what the conditions were like? Obviously yeah, it was very gold. good. Yeah. yeah, coming from FTMO, I think it was also my uh, Forex funds was back then. Uh, yeah, they were around. But they had, yeah, very bad spread. Mm -hmm. So obviously, funny times. Yeah, I remember, I remember. It was uh, very, no slippage. Mm -hmm. Spread on gold was like uh, 10 points, 15 points, mm -hmm. no commission. So obviously that helps, right? Of course. Because if you go aggressive and you scarp, you can just go break even Especially and not lose gold, it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think that was a, was a big part of my of the success with them, yeah. But that wasn't sustainable, right? Of Let's course, yeah, happened, yeah. yeah. We'll come back to that for sure because it's, it's very interesting, the space we're in when, when we have that example, yeah. especially if you've traded there as well. And um, what was that like then? Obviously, you had an 80K payout pending, but then yeah, you didn't get it. Did that impact you at all? <sighs> I mean, I kind of saw it coming mm. with prop firms. I, I see it coming uh, with what happened recently. I also saw it coming. So I kind of saw it coming because it wasn't, if you think about it as a, per, a business perspective, can't be sustainable, right? Mm. So I was like, I made a profit. I was looking at it. I was like, if I get it, that's fine. If I don't, then just going to keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was kind of tough, of course, not receiving it. I think I got... 15% of it or something like that. Mm -hmm. I think they paid that. Yeah, small amount. Yeah, yeah. So it was like uh, 15,000 or something. I, I can't remember. Uh, so at least I got something, right? I was very, I was happy with that. And yeah. then, yeah, kind of took a break from uh, pro form space. Then. Yeah, that, that happened. I did the same thing. Yeah, I know. It's I just know. like, it kind of messes with your head a bit. Like, it does, you yeah. don't want to waste, it's more the waste of time, I think, uh, more than anything. Because yeah. you spend so long to do the challenges, go through all that exactly, hiding, yeah. and then it just gets taken away like that. I know. Um, <laughs> so yeah. So but then obviously from there, you, did you go on like a revenge sort of mindset and just like go for all the firms? And get um, no, no, no. Just yeah, I tried to get funded with my uh, my Forex funds, and I lost a few challenges okay. because I was in that mindset, mm -hmm. of course. So it's very uh, it happens to everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just kind of took a break. To be honest, I was kind of sick of it. Let's say took a break. Went back to trading personal capital for a while until, uh, I don't know, one year and a half ago, I think, when I got back into prop firm space. So just a year and a half ago? Yeah, I think so, yeah. So, is that that, so in about 18 months you've scaled? Exactly, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. the scaling came in like three, four months, to be oh, honest. Wow. Yeah. What was it? Was there anything in particular? Or was it just that you maybe you built enough data to really feel um, confident in your edge? So, yeah, after the story, after personal capital, I got into my Forex funds, mm -hmm. traded them, got the max funded the VIP program, all of that. Okay. I was just trading with them, 600K. And um, yeah, I was trying, I was looking for other prop firms mm -hmm. and uh, I kind of took a few days off and tried to really go into prop firm 
companies and how they're, uh, you know, the rules and everything. Yeah. So that's when I kind of figured like most of them don't really copy traders. Mm-hmm. It's just um, the fees and they pay out the, the winnings. So it kind of looks like a online casino or something like that, mm-hmm. right? Because you have losers, which are way more percentage wise. And then you have winners mm-hmm. that are paid from the losing clients. So if um, I know I'm going into online casino, let's find a way to not break the rules, but just go around them and find a way to maximize the profits. So that's when I kind of made my own system um, in trading prop from, which is basically, let's think of it as a business, just a business, right? You pay some money in exchange for uh, a funding account. Mm-hmm. So you pay the fees in order to get a, a live account. Most people, when they come into prop trading firm, uh, prop trading companies, they try to go either for the highest account yeah. or just go for one account. Right? Yeah. They buy one account, they trade it for, let's say, a month, they lose it, and then they go over again. And once they become funded on one account, they're like, I need to recover everything, right? I need to car- recover the fees, all of that. And most of them don't really reach the first payout, do they? Mm-hmm. Right. So that's when I kind of figured instead of just getting one account, let's get multiple accounts mm-hmm. and increase my odds of winning. Because my goal is to spend money to get a funding account, mm-hmm. right? That's my only goal. Once I get a funding account, then I can start basically using that asset to produce me money. So that's when I uh, went to, let's say, a, a company. And I was like, instead of buying the max uh, capital, just two accounts, let's buy some more accounts. And from there, try to pass at least one or two, mm-hmm. right? So it's kind of a business investment idea, right? You invest more money. Uh, to get a few funding accounts. Okay. Yeah. So, so instead of, let's say, uh, let's try and give an example. So instead of, say, let's say, FTMO, let's say you can get 400K with them, right? Yeah. Um, instead of buying, say, two 200Ks, you'll say, okay, I'll buy four or more. Yeah. yeah. Um, four of those, knowing that some will lose. Exactly. And then once I've got the past one, do you then switch the mindset once you have the funded account? Yeah, whole different uh, risk strategy. That's what, the reason I got banned on most of, <laughs> of the preference mm-hmm. because... The, the way I utilize risk on a, fund, on a challenge account is way different than a funding account. On mm-hmm. the challenge account, my goal is to get funded. Mm-hmm. So um, when I started doing this kind of, uh, let's say, plan, yeah. I was going for, I wasn't really buying multiple because I can afford to lose, let's say, two 200k account. My goal was to get max funded. Yes. So I was buying two 200k account and I was just doing 4% risk. Mm-hmm. Right? Trading 4% risk, phase one, if I get a 1 to 2, I pass it. Yeah. Right? If I lose it, then I have one more chance. Or yeah. even one more, if you have like 10, 12% drawdown, you still have a little chance of going back. Exactly. So you just need the winning trade, 1 to 2, that's it. Phase 2, you just need the 1 to 1. Right? So I was doing 4% risk, 4.5%, just go for 1 to 2, pass it, phase 2, same thing. So you basically need two wins in a row mm-hmm. to pass it. Right? It's not that hard. And then, yeah, once you get a final account, just kind of low risk. Because uh, as a business asset, if you invest some money, let's say you invest five five thousand or ten thousand dollars to get four hundred k in uh, in funding, you just need half percent, one percent every payout, mm-hmm. right? And just use that. And um, yeah, that's the mindset shift that I had. Instead of focusing on just trading the account the whole two weeks or one month, mm-hmm. let's just find the quality setups. Use half percent risk, go for one to two, have one percent, wait for payout, mm-hmm. and use that money to reinvest. So that's that's how I did it. Yeah. <laughs> No, fair enough, because at the end of the day, there's no, well, as far as I know, there's no rule set in terms of the challenges, right? A yeah. lot of these uh, evaluation companies, the rules come in on the funded account, you yeah. know? So like they say, like even the ones that say you can't trade news, let's say, or over the weekend yeah. on the funded account, on yeah, the you challenges, can trade on you trade. can trade what you want. Exactly, so it's a whole different thing, right? Yeah. And most people are calling me a gambler now recently on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Why am I a gambler? Because I'm trying to game the system. You are trying to buy one account at a time, failing mm-hmm. 10 accounts mm-hmm. until you get one fund. I'm buying 10 accounts, I'm passing two. And I use those two to pay yeah. off in one payoff. What's well, a mindset? I would say you would be a gambler if you did the same thing on the funded account. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But if, if you're changing it to your actual edge and strategy on the exactly, funded account, yeah. then that's, yeah, it's fair yeah, enough. Yeah, because most people think if I'm doing the same thing, I'm risking 4% on a funded account. That's why they ban mm-hmm. me, right? Because uh, the risk is too much. Mm-hmm. But that's not the case. Of course, when I was having all those accounts, yeah. like 15, 20, I was doing higher risk on some accounts, mm-hmm. 2 3%. Just because there were so many to manage, mm-hmm. so I was trying to aim for bigger targets, not just one percent. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a whole different perspective if you think about well, it. Yeah, well, yeah, it's a whole different mindset, hundred yeah. percent. Because it's you, as you say, what you do is instead of focusing on okay, this one challenge, yeah, you know, and, and stressing about this one challenge. Even let's say if you had multiple challenges, but you, at the end of the day, you're stressing about the outcome yeah. of that individual one. 
comes down to a few things. One, most people can't afford a challenge, but they'll buy one anyway. So they got all this pressure. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but if you treat it like a business and you see it as a business expense and you kind of zoom out and you treat it in this way, your whole aim is just to get funded. So what is the most efficient way for you? Everyone's different. Yeah. But what's the most efficient way for you to get funded? Now, I know a few people who trade that same way. Yeah, yeah. But in terms of where it gets onto the funded account, that's where the change has to happen. Yeah, if you don't different. change, you could still probably make money, but it's going to blow up and that's exactly, where it's like yeah, yeah. the edge probably won't be there overall. Yeah, yeah. Versus if you're going to switch to your edge and, and the way that you actually want exactly. to trade on the funded, not this isn't for everyone, obviously, because most people probably won't be able to handle the emotions of <laughs> yeah, losing. Of so yeah. I'm sure when you've done this, there's been times where you might have lost two, three, yeah, four yeah, yeah. funded accounts, uh, challenges, sorry, in a row to then yeah. get the funded yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. even with you guys, mm -hmm. I told you I finally got funding after six or eight tries. Oh, wow. So it did take me quite a while. Of course, it was the period where I was just getting banned, losing capital, losing payouts. Mm. So it was a bit different uh, psychology-wise. Of course. But even if I have six, eight tries, that's two payouts, 2%. Mm -hmm. So of course, I'm going to make that in the coming months. I don't need to make it in one week. Just make it so it's understanding month. probabilities takes time. Yeah, and I'm thinking it of uh, long term, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not thinking just one month. I'm thinking six months, 12 months. So yeah. if my initial cost is $15,000, mm -hmm. what can I make in a year with those accounts? I can make five, six times mm -hmm. more at least. So that's the that's the reason. I did um, an event in Bucharest uh, with uh, some students and um, I explained them the yeah. system. Mm -hmm. And I was asking each one of them and they were like blowing six, seven, eight accounts. Right. So I told them instead of buying one, 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 buy six, seven, you pass two, you trade those uh, live accounts, different risk percentage, one percent, half percent, aim for a one to one, one to two, which is not hard in two weeks. Like, come on, everyone can do that. Right. Mm -hmm. And then just use that money. You recover the investment, you invest more and you slowly build your uh, capital. Definitely. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, people are losing those accounts anyway, as you said, like yeah. people are losing six, eight more. Like I've, I've known people who've lost like 20, 30 challenges yeah, yeah. one at a time. So it is a mindset. Not everyone's gonna be able to handle it because they have to be able to handle the psychology. They need the finances to be able to back yeah, it up exactly, as well. Yeah. That's the biggest part, I think. Yeah. Most people, like I said, they can't afford one challenge, but they'll still spend the money when they shouldn't. They're not in the position yet. Yeah, but if you you only can afford a 100k account, you only afford 500. Why not not buy four 25k accounts? Yeah, because your odds of getting one funding account is way bigger, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, no, that's so fair. So get that, and then you start trading on that. Yeah, that's it's fair. It's just that's fair. perspective. Right? So, so who are you banned on? I know you're banned on FT, man. <laughs> yeah. Right. I think recently bespoke, and yeah. then was there any more? There are, but I'm not sure I can uh, talk about that because that's the lawsuit right. threats and everything. No, oh, have you got have you got lawsuits? I've got banded? four right now, wow. <laughs> including FT1. But I mean, I can talk about this mm -hmm. a couple of them, uh, funding well, People don't understand like FTMO because I know people try to bring it up on you and they're like, yeah, oh, yeah. you're banned from FTMO. But with FTMO, it was a case where they emailed you, as far as yeah. I know, they emailed you saying that your risk is too high mm -hmm. um, and they just advised you to reduce your risk. I think the only mistake that you made with that was that you then posted it which yeah, they yeah, use yeah. in their like their T's and C's. Like if you post it, we can ban you. Uh, it wasn't just happened. that. It wasn't just that. So um, obviously I told you the backstory, mm -hmm. six, seven accounts lost. Maybe mm -hmm. I did have a funding account with FTMO. I did withdraw some money. So probably above break even profits, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So I came back to it after scaling accounts on my personal name. I wanted to do something on my company name. So okay. I wanted to get some accounts. And obviously there's a few options for that. FTMO is one, mm -hmm. one of them because you can set up as a company. Mm -hmm. So I thought, all right, let's just buy two, 200K accounts, company behalf, his company card, everything. And I did the same same system, right? Four percent risk. Uh, phase one, I lost the first trade, mm -hmm. won the second one, one to three, passed it, and uh, you go through the trading ten trading days, which is like two weeks because you yeah. can trade on the weekend. So two weeks after, get phase two accounts because mm -hmm. I was copying the trade the trades between them. So I was just going <laughs> high probability trades and uh, passed them first try. And then second phase again, risk four percent, lost the first trade, uh, won the second one, one to two, passed it, right? Mm -hmm. two more weeks so that's almost one month uh, yeah one month passed it had to resubmit my documents company documents everything waited for a week email them no answer mm. all right one week later i get that email in that email it didn't really say just it said about the risk yeah that's not sustainable and then not looking for that but they also said they're gonna reset my accounts to phase one right so it wasn't oh, just it. yeah it wasn't just a warning was right taking you back yeah yeah we're gonna reset your accounts to phase one after a month and a half like come on that's mm. just well that's just weird just weird right it's, just, it's weird so that's when i posted on twitter and it really blew up mm -hmm. and um yeah one day later i tried to log in and the account was blocked and they uh yeah 
they send me an email, either you delete the tweets and we refund you or we just go through the lawsuit. So obviously I deleted just because to get my refund. Of but course, yeah, yeah. You know, one, one uh, and a half month, that's, that's a long time, mm -hmm. right? Trading, going through the challenge. Yeah. Obviously if I lost the accounts, no email was uh, gonna be sent, exactly right? yeah 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 so it's like uh it's always interesting when it g comes to the winning side right? exactly yeah, yeah. same it's thing with strange because yeah. like they could advise you of the risk and then just let you trade the funded account yeah if they saw me risk four percent on phase one why not just plus like it, and again it doesn't make sense in terms of like they haven't lost out on the challenges right yeah obviously they're gonna have to refund you if you get a pay if you get a payout yeah exactly, if you don't get a payout yeah. then obviously they, they get to yeah if the i was risking four percent i'm mm. sure i wasn't uh <laughs> I Strange. didn't have a high probability mm. to get a bail. And then recently you had the bespoke um, problem yeah. as well. I know with bespoke, I know that there's they offer up to they were offering two yeah. million funding. It was two million when I first started. Yeah, yeah, it was two million, and then I think someone got close. Oh, I've heard of someone. I else was close, close also. Yeah. yeah, and then they they said that person wasn't trading with you know the right yeah, strategies, know, and they yeah, cut I him know, down. I know a couple of people that texted me when I start uh, when I first started having problems with them, and they texted me. I was like. I had 1.6 million in funding and then just send me back to the 400k. Yeah. And that's not fair, is it? If you advertise something, why, exactly, not, yeah. why not just let the traders trade? Okay, and if you think about it, it's just fishy, right? Everything that happens, it's fishy. Same thing happened to me when I got close to the max funded. Um, obviously, as you said, some firms, you go through a lot of challenges mm -hmm. to get that. Mm -hmm. So I did go through a lot of challenges. Uh, of course, the capital was a lot. It was a big jump. And uh, yeah, once I got the funding out, I started trading on them, started making payouts. I was above the break-even point, making profits. And that's when uh, they basically stopped allowing me to, uh, to get any accounts without telling me that. So mm -hmm. they banned me in the back end, but on the front end, uh, they asked me to come interview. They asked me to post payouts. They asked me all of that. And in the back end, I was actually banned. And they were keep saying uh, there's payment issues, stuff like that. And I can, uh, can't go more, more capital. What are your thoughts on that then? So when obviously, you know, they're asking you for payout, asking you for interview, but then they're just banning you. Scam. It's just a scam, bro. Mm. It's just a scam because uh, before the, pay, the the interview, my payout was coming in 30 minutes. <laughs> mm. I was just requesting the payout 30 minutes later, I had the money. Uh, after the interview, I was waiting two, three days. Uh, no more um, answering to my messages mm -hmm. and all of that. So obviously I was just marketing, marketing for them. And mm. that's the case for... Uh, other traders that had an interview with them. Just yeah. marketing, and after that, they just throw you throw you uh, on the other side. It's strange. I feel like it's strange, because it's like, in my opinion, the best asset to a evaluation firms, any of these evaluation firms, is obviously yeah. having profitable traders. I think the reason why FTMO is so popular and done what it's done is because it's always paid its traders. Yeah. Um, and then therefore, we're seeing a common theme more recently where, don't get me wrong, there are traders who cheat. There are traders who Obviously, actually cheat yeah, and yeah. they use actual, you know, um, you know bad uh, strategies to try and game the system. Yeah. But I believe that the one that you're explaining, I know there's others who use it similar as well. And uh, I believe that's not the case, right? At the end of the day, the, they have to be able to, you know, it's not someone, it's, it's a strategy in itself to be able to handle that level exactly. of uh, risk, <laughs> to see those sort of numbers on challenges, yeah, to yeah, invest yeah. into that many challenges, to be willing to lose that many challenges. Or, you know, some people you might not lose. You might actually win the first one. Yeah, you go. can just buy yeah. the first account and pass them. As you've seen with Bespoke, obviously you it took a long uh, Yeah, it was large just amount. a losing streak, losing yeah. streak right? So and then, uh, but having to go through that is not easy. You know, and that's no. an edge in itself. So I, I don't, in my opinion, I think that, you know, it's, that's something that shouldn't be seen as bad. You could say it's gambling. Okay, fair, but trading itself is almost gambling anyway. Yeah, exactly. Um, but if you've got an edge to that, it's not gambling at the end of the day, no. right? It's playing this longer term vision that most people just don't have. Exactly. Um, so I find it very bizarre that uh, these companies would want to do that. I know, obviously, I guess it runs the risk of, well, I guess it doesn't because if you're using proper risk management on the funded account, yeah. then there wouldn't, there's not a risk of then like huge profits being made. No, no. Um, so I don't know. I don't understand it. I wasn't even going above 3%, 4% profit. Mm -hmm. So I found it was just under 2 3%. So it was smaller payouts. But yeah, it was very, very weird because again, they uh, basically, I think they figured out what I was doing mm -hmm. in terms of my uh, long-term plan. Because obviously the, the thing that I talked about is long-term, six mm -hmm. months, 12 months. Mm -hmm. So going through the losses at first and then getting the fine accounts and start to make money. What was the reason for banning you there? So, so you know, you said you, they, found out, they found out what you're doing, but again, what you're doing 
doesn't go against the rules as far as I know. No, no it's so how did they ban you? What the was rules. the thing that they said? You're banned for this. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, they didn't say anything. Like I told you, I was uh, I had the funny accounts, mm-hmm. and then uh, I couldn't purchase anymore. So I had I think three four hundred accounts. I wanted to get two more to mm-hmm. get that two million mark. Just couldn't par- purchase. Right, I couldn't use credits. Nothing. Uh, due to payment processing issues. Mm-hmm. That's what they are saying. And I was like, okay, let me just send you crypto. You issue the account, no answer, right? Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, after f- f- traded that, uh, had uh, again, a few losing trades, a few losing, uh, a losing streak, kind of lost the, the accounts. Oh, okay, and then yeah, you couldn't buy uh, more. Yeah, exactly, and I couldn't buy more. I was like, okay, just made my, my math up, it was profitable. Mm-hmm. And then, um, yeah, basically what happened, my wife signed up. Mm-hmm to trade because uh, obviously if I know the rules pro mm-hmm. form rules like I, I read them if two people are in the same you can uh, confirm this if pe- mm-hmm. two people are in the same house right same IP uh, maybe same device or different devices right it doesn't really matter mm-hmm. uh, as long as they're not trading at the same time mm-hmm. they're not using the same trades mm-hmm. same risk all of that same credit card same payouts yeah yeah isn't it uh, all right the yeah, rules? yeah, yeah. Right, as long as the max capital isn't reached, I know yeah. a lot of platforms have those rules. Yeah, so it's like max capital on strategies, I believe, is the way they uh, describe it. So then, yeah. therefore, let's say if two of you had, um, even if if you had their four hundred k each on FTMO, yeah. uh, it's had the same strategy. Then they'll yeah, yeah, ban you yeah, yeah obviously. No, yeah. But me being funded in all of these companies, I wasn't really going down that road, right? Exactly. So what you're saying is your wife got funded with them, but you weren't yeah, trading with them exactly. anymore. Exactly. Exactly. So that's perfectly fine, isn't mm. it? Right, different everything. According to their rules, yeah. According I know the they try and yeah. argue. I know that well, they're trying to insinuate that you're trading. Yeah, but how can you prove that? Mm-hmm. Right, I wasn't really touching the device. Yeah, sure. There, I have a few phones at home that I use MetaTrader on. Mm-hmm. Of course, one was used maybe for a funded account, but I wasn't trading on them mm-hmm. at that time. I wasn't really funded. I think I, I I lost the accounts at some point, so I wasn't really using that. I wasn't trading at that time. So she was trading, and mm-hmm. uh, why isn't that okay? Right. Just how can you prove? Because if I'm trading EURUSD and I'm placing a buy, mm-hmm. right? You're trading EURUSD, maybe you see the same setup. Mm-hmm. If you take it, what does that mean? Like we can make profit at the same time? Well, the thing is, unless if you, I would imagine it's, I see their point if you both have an account at the same time. No, there was but no account at the same time. one account, then I, I don't think at see. some two weeks, three weeks period, we had the same accounts, but was not even trading the same day. Mm. I was trading on Monday, she was trading Wednesday or Friday. Mm. So how can you can you say that? So according to the rules and everything, there was no point in uh, in banning. In banning. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, after after a few payouts, everything going well, um, I kind of contacted their team again. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, um, I kind of want to get funded again, right? Mm-hmm. But again, respect the max capital. Yeah. So um, yeah, and that's when they told me, oh, you were soft banned from our prop from due to risk, all of that. But so uh, we can fix you. that. Mm. Yeah, after almost two months, and they said, uh, "Yeah, we can fix that." So they uh, they fixed it. I purchased two accounts to have that max max capital, um, and uh, yeah, after I passed one of them, I was uh, trading the other challenge. So I was expecting a final account. That's when I woke up one day, right before a few payouts from my wife, and uh, everything was gone. Right. Oh, so they banned both. I think so. I didn't receive any email, but just. <laughs> I don't know don't how know. these companies operate, bro. You, you don't even know, get an official email. You just go on Twitter and you see it. Like, how right. does that work, right? Twitter is not companies uh, supporting, right? Mm. So it's just just a weird situation. And obviously, there was some not gonna say agenda, but there was they were looking into it because um, if you think about it, this prop from risk management because you get like information from the risk department and everything like that. Uh, they say all this stuff that you're a bad actor, that due to too much risk, exposure to the company for the benefit of other traders, you mm-hmm. know how governments used to say, uh, for your own safety and the others, just stay in ha- and stay, stay, stay inside. Mm. It's the same thing, right? They use this uh, tactic to manipulate your thinking. So, I mean, what was the, the bridge there? Didn't do anything wrong. The um, rules were respected, and uh, yeah, started going hard on them on Twitter because uh, I know when I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. When I'm wrong, and I did something wrong. I'm just not gonna take part of it. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't wrong that time. I respected everything, and it just sucks because you go with the rules, mm-hmm. and they they still decide to go against you. What are your thoughts in regards to like the whole Twitter space or just social media? Then, in terms of like 
these situations. We've seen a good handful of them. So ever since MFF, we've seen more. Yeah, yeah. But even before that, we've seen them, of course. Uh, with like Noman, for example. Yeah, that was with a the big same one, companies yeah. as well. Um, and again, it's like obviously we know these companies do pay out because you know, yep. people have been paid out. You've been paid out. Yeah, no problems. Um, yeah. So what are your thoughts in regards to like the whole social media aspect? Because as you said, like you try and speak to support, but then you know no you answer. get a faster response somehow on social media. So yeah. is that because I know like on their side, like the company side, they say, oh yeah, you know these influencers try to use yeah, their influence the to use. target that's us the and stuff use, like that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, but then on your side, is it a case where you feel like you don't get respected or don't get the responses in yeah. a timely manner when you're trying to go the private route? Many independent traders around the world have great strategies, but no access to capital. Fundraising might not be your game. However, Darwin X, a UK and EU regulated broker and asset manager, has been providing a solution for this since 2012, a path towards investor capital on merit. The mantra is act like a hedge fund manager and you'll become one. Just trade your best and focus on building a track record attractive to future investors. The more investable your track record progresses, the more performance fees Darwin X pays you. You participate in the Darwin X virtual capital program, Darwin IA, and every month receive fees from the benefits you generate on those allocations and on external investor capital. You can do all of this by trading on a Darwin X live account if you have the confidence and the capital, or via a Darwin X zero account without risk and for just 38 euros a month via a virtual account if you're not ready yet. Join Darwin X today and be a professional trader. Save 20 euros signing up to Darwin X using the special code RISDOM20. The link is in the description below. Now let's get back to the episode. Yeah, exactly. You don't get an answer and nobody assists you. Uh, and uh, you send emails, no answer. And of course you go on social media because if this company scams people mm -hmm. and I'm a, uh, not really big on social media, but I have an audience. Mm -hmm. If they do that to me, I'm pretty sure they do it to other people. And I've seen, I've received a lot of messages from people with five followers, 10 followers showing me like rejected payouts and all of that. And nobody sees those people. Mm. So that's why you go social media, you put some pressure on. I did put, <laughs> put uh, quite a lot of pressure on, on them, but again, no, no answer, just, um, same thing that they try and again how can you call yourself a big company mm -hmm. if you're the ceo right mm -hmm. you're the ceo of a multi-million dollar company and you just stalk people on social media and post uh, stuff about them because uh, come on bro you run a, a million dollar company you go talk about my wife that she's in university and she can trade mm -hmm. what is that how can you how can you say that it just doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. right twitter is twitter is not if you're a big company just be a company, mm -hmm. right? Not just go on social media and rant about it. Yeah, no, I think it's bizarre, and especially like with the situation you're facing there. Yeah. Because as I said, like to say you can assume that's fine. You could say like, yeah, you're probably trading, right? They could say that, but like you'd really need to be able to prove it. Yeah, there was and, no uh, proof. The, a the the aspect of that is that you would both need to have an account at the same time and breach yeah. like the max capital rules, etc. Or to have the for same that trades. to really be an issue. Exactly, yeah. but the only thing they said was just, oh yeah, the AP matches mm -hmm. and uh, some device ID matches because it was one phone that I used before, wasn't using it anymore. Because, come on, point, like, how can it, how can that be a rule? Let's say I have uh, I have an iPhone, right? Mm -hmm. I use it for trading, yeah, yeah, and then I sell it to someone, and that guy gets it and trades. Mm -hmm. Is he gonna get banned? Yeah, no, that's right. <laughs> but what I would say is, at that time, were, did you have any notification that you were banned, as in you were no. banned? No, no, no. So at that time, you just didn't have any accounts. She had an account. Yeah. You had the same device. So that's not an issue because. But I wasn't using that device. Yeah, I wasn't using yeah. that device. No. no. No, what I mean is, if as long as you don't have an account at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, to the rules. Yeah. That's the point, right? Because if so I then have. It shouldn't be an issue then. Because really. if I had a uh, trading on my phone, I had my fund accounts, mm -hmm. her fund accounts, I was just switching around them and trading. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course, that's a breach, right? That's not, that's not allowed, but that wasn't the case. And the uh, same IP thing, right? Of course, if you're living in the same house, you're going to yeah. have the same IP, right? But if you're not trading at the same time, you're not breaching the max allowance. Because mm -hmm. I know those rules, FTMO and all of that, the big companies have those rules. So there was no, no, there was nothing. So that's it. We, had a, we had an interesting one uh, at SFT with those two friends. Oh, yeah? uh, you know, they, they flagged up on the, you know, their payouts were coming. They flagged up because they had same IP and then they had a same device address at one oh, time. Yeah. 
So then they reached out to me. I spoke to them. We looked into it. Um, you know, and, and a lot of people do trade. Like not a lot of people don't obviously have friends who trade, but there are occasionally yeah. where two people are friends and they meet up and they trade and yeah, and uh, you know they've been doing it a number of years. And that's what they told us. So we just looked at it and we said, okay, that's fine. And all right? we had to do was okay, that's fine. You know, you've notified us. We can expect it. They did do. There was, I think, uh, a handful of trades that were on the same device. So we just had said to them, don't use for whatever reason, yeah, don't look, don't use the same uh, device again because that will flag up and next time we'll probably have to then you know, yeah, reject yeah. it because we've told you the advice not to do that. Um, and then we just said as well, what was the other thing we said? Oh, we just said like, you know, obviously if there's like a, say, really large increase in, in profits and they're shared again in terms of the exact same trades, yeah. it might flag up. We're not going to breach you, but we might flag up. So we'll have to look into it then. So yeah, maybe not pay shocked. out, right? Yeah, well, it depends, right? It depends on obviously the actual yeah, trades because, um, you know, people trade together. They trade next to each other, they trade together. Uh, again, it comes down to those rules of uh, strategies on max capital, of course, but they weren't close to that, so that was fine. So then, yeah, we let them trade as normal. Um, That's the difference. So I think see? it's case by case. And I do understand as well that, you know, as companies get bigger, um, it does become harder to try and be a bit more personal and a bit more like yeah. understanding, uh, not understanding, but like to, to be able to speak to every person who's in those situations because there might be a lot of them. But... Um, but yeah, I think, I think yeah, it's a bizarre situation. You send an email, notifying them, maybe provide some explanation and yeah. then continue trading, mm -hmm. right? This was a whole different situation because mm -hmm. I woke up, all accounts are breached, yeah. payouts were pending. So there was around, I think, $17,000. So were the payouts, payouts for your wife? Yeah. And then yeah, you, I didn't have at the fund. time, were you trying to do challenges? Yeah, yeah. I had two challenges and I just passed one. So I had, was she uh, max funded? Or? No, she just had uh, two, three accounts. Mm -hmm. Three accounts. Yeah, so um, wasn't any anything like that. So again, weird, right? You request payout, you wait for three, four days, and then after night uh, you find that and you go on social media and the first tweet appears, the CEO saying, oh, we found this. Would you guess who it is and stuff like that? Like she, so they he, started it. Yeah, exactly. Like he was bragging on social media, like, oh, I found this and I banned him, right? Uh, what is there to, to brag about? Because it just shows you shows the people that you're just actively looking into finding, to, let's say, dirt on traders mm. to ban them. And that was the case with uh, multiple ones. It's just, you see the difference between your story and what happens? Like, you're obviously notified mm -hmm. by them, which is a great thing, but you try to solve the, the to come to a resolution with them. Mm -hmm. In this case, it was just bragging about, oh, we found this, this uh, we found that on social media, that uh, she's your girlfriend or wife or whatever. Like, how can you know that? It's just we don't share the same name yet so how do you know we are mm. uh, right because obviously yeah, yeah. flagged and then you start looking on social media and you find a picture with us and then you ban her. that's the reason for banning mm. like come on it's, it's bizarre yeah, yeah and what, what would you say like in regards to like um the company obviously putting your figures out there you know in terms of like how much you'd paid you and how see, much you profit uh all the stats that he shared yeah. uh, first of all those are not real so um, I did my own math. Doesn't come close to that. Obviously, there was a big amount of spending, mm -hmm. 30, 30 something, but the profit was 40 something. So mm -hmm. it wasn't, I think he said like a 7K difference. It was a bit more, I can't remember. I think I made it up. It was $15,000 profit yeah. overall. But again, that happened because I had a losing streak. Mm -hmm. I got the fund accounts and I just started trading on them. So two or three months, I could have just uh, continued. And at the end of the year, I'm sure it have been a lot more profit. Mm -hmm. Cause that happens to, yeah, that's just how the system works, mm -hmm. right? And again, about the situation, I texted other pro firm owners, the big ones uh, that I'm funded with, and uh, again, I explained the situation. And yeah, that's that's okay, right? That's okay with us. Yeah, Your so trading you style. actively like communicate. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. some of them a book me, so mm -hmm. uh, yeah, keep chatting with them. And, uh, yeah, we're very happy. No, no issues. But yeah. uh, of course, they can't really go on social media. Right. Well, yeah, I believe like, you know, with the social media stuff, yeah, it has its benefits to be able to engage with the community in a positive yeah. way. I guess, you know, I understand from the company's perspective. So like with the Noman situation and similar that was with different. yours. Wasn't it different? With, theirs, with his, it was very different, yeah. yeah. Um, and it'll be interesting when we uh, speak to him to hear like his side in person. But yeah, but generally, essentially from the company's perspective, I can see what they're trying to do. Because the company's fear is, is people with an influence 
um, yeah. you know, using that influence against them is damaging, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so there is that fear. That's a valid fear. Uh, the other fear, though, or the other reason why they would probably go out their way to do it first is they're trying to control the narrative or trying yeah. to damage control, yeah, yeah. which, again, as from a business perspective, I Makes respect. Makes sense, yeah, I respect, yeah. But um, how does it actually come off to the community, you know? And I think when it comes to these... Uh, you know, the Twitter space, I think companies should stay companies. Yeah, I exactly. think the CEOs, CEOs can decide to, you know, engage with the community in a positive manner. But, but I believe it. like at the end of the day, if you're wanting to build a company in the right way, like FTMO, you don't see FTMO ever no. going no. out there where no, you don't see any, you know, some, most people don't even know who the CEOs are. Exactly, you know? yeah. Which can be a positive and a negative, I guess. Because they're a company. Yeah, they're, a they're focused company, on the infrastructure. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's just weird, like texting back and forth on Twitter. Oh, uh, we found matching ips and i'm like yeah we live in the same house and then oh yeah but device id yeah i use that phone oh but she's in university she can trade mm. or oh, why are you saying a woman can trade if she's in university right doesn't make sense oh but i didn't say that you're trying to call me that 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 like come on that's how can you trust a company with a ceo that just goes texting on uh, social media and mm. argues with, with a, a trader that they were basically pushing right yeah they are praising right mm. so uh, it's just if I was blowing that many accounts and I wasn't uh, a good trader, why just why do they interview with me, right? It doesn't make sense. So have you had any sort of uh, backlash in regards to the uh, any other firms out there? Or you said they're fine? Backlash from this one? Uh, yeah, this, because uh, of the situation? situation, yeah, and how public no, it was. Not All really, good? no. That's All good, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I had problems with other platforms uh, where, uh, let's say, I would get a 500k account. Mm -hmm. uh, I had one situation with that company, 500k account, which was a bit more expensive passed it first try so i didn't really that way i, I traded more conservative so yeah. i was really doing four percent doing one two percent passed it like two three weeks and then after reviewing them uh, again they had i read the rules one rule said you can risk more than two percent so i wasn't really risking more than two percent it was just one trade phase one account where i risked 2.2 percent oh. <laughs> right so after passing uh, passing phase one passed phase two was waiting for the live account they emailed me and said oh we can't have you because you risk 2.2% on that specific trade, which didn't really make any profit, right? Was a 2.2% risk, but I just closed it around break even. So rejecting my uh, my live account after three three weeks of trading, again, like that doesn't really make sense, does it? Mm. Obviously it was, let's say, a breach of the rule, but why not just warn me then? Or uh, stuff like that. And or tell you on phase one, like. Yeah, yeah exactly. And they're saying, oh, we well, can have you. You but say that closed break even then? Which one? That, that trade. Yeah, yeah, it was so how would they know? a bit of profit. Yeah. So how would they know that it was maybe based on stop or no, no, no I'm, I'm, I'm wrong. That was, yeah, that was a stop loss. Yeah, yeah it was uh, I think it was one point five percent, and I kind of let it grow, uh, breathe a little bit more, mm. and I got stopped out. But again, I passed it. Mm. So uh, what's the issue in that, right? And again, same thing. They say you're gonna, uh, we're gonna reset you to phase one, start all over again. It doesn't really make sense, right? Mm. So that's a company I got a lawsuit from had to sign an agreement and everything to, be, to get my money back, which is insane, right? Oh, wow. Get my refund. So there's a lot of companies I had issues with more, gain same stuff. Usually there's companies that offer a uh, big account. Yeah. So the, the, the I mean, other- that seems to be like a red flag when yeah, they offer exactly. large accounts I, and I, large I, Yeah, but money. I found that the, <laughs> the, the wrong way, right? The mm. hard way. Uh, there was another company, got the 500K account, passed it. Mm -hmm was waiting for the funding and they um, they used i mean they said that due to money laundering or stuff like that romania i think you know the situation yeah. romania is in a flat country so we can have you trading the 500k account we're gonna either refund you or jump you to 100k account mm. which again how does it make it s does does it make sense you're purchasing an account after you pass it money laundering what does have? To, what does that have? Money to do? would only make sense if they were giving you money without or, you trading. Yeah, or me paying more and more accounts. Mm. How does that make sense? I already got funded. Why not just give me the funding account, mm. right? And again, you uh, these platforms, platform companies, they just shove it in your in your face, right? You either take it or leave mm -hmm. it. So, so, yeah. so like due to these situations, though, does it make you want to move away from evaluation companies? Yeah, definitely. Like, because mm. uh, it's just such a waste of. Also money, because if you spend money on challenges and then you get fund accounts mm -hmm. and then they say we can have you training with us. Uh, why did you let me purchase accounts? Mm -hmm. That happened to me <laughs> on another platform. So I, I bought uh, two accounts, 
failed them and then when I tried to go again they restricted me they banned me so I couldn't purchase any more accounts to maybe get funded to get the money back and I also wasn't given a refund and I also tried to go the legal route with them all right if you're gonna ban me just just refund me the money right even if I lost the challenges because I can't be trading with us but they're just uh, I didn't have any of it so yeah uh, that's the thing Um, I think when you become a little bit bigger especially in platform capital let's say 500k 1 million is fine won't have issues because there uh, there's good companies but once you try to scale it like I did go to all these platforms to gain more capital that's when the uh, issues start to, to rise mm-hmm. so yeah move, moving forward I'm gonna slowly uh, build my track record just focus again on personal personal mm-hmm. capital already have uh, connections for investors and all of that mm-hmm. and I think that's the way to go trading wise increasing the real capital because you won't have any problems there with payouts because that's the thing it's just added stress right the challenge which all right you do it my way you invest money you get the funding out but then there's also the stress of not be- being paid out mm-hmm. the stress of having uh, added slippage mm-hmm. which i had in another platform <laughs> so i traded them all um yeah well uh challenge was perfect conditions you get a live account you place a five lot buy on euros you get slip for pips on entry and then stop loss for more pips it mm-hmm. was eight pips on the position but um yeah that was fortunately solved but maybe that was solved because i am uh, like an influential social mm-hmm. media let's say trader because mm-hmm. uh, obviously they see my name and everything but maybe again a trader that isn't popular maybe they just wouldn't fix the issue so just a lot of problems finding finding up and it's hard to to scale up right yeah no definitely it makes sense and well how much have you like withdrawn from prop firms in total total since i started with do them you, do you know how much you've spent and how much you were drawn do you know like those two? i i know specific stats on a uh, certain prop firm, but i mm-hmm. don't know i don't know overall uh usually let's say let's call it like a risk to reward maybe yeah yeah yeah, yeah. usually uh, prop firms that i've been trading with six months mm-hmm. and more my usual risk rule is one to six one to seven okay so, very so high. yeah so yeah bigger companies let's say uh for example um, my fund effect spent around fourteen thousand, withdrew around seventy eight thousand, something mm. like that so it's a good ratio, right? Even uh, yeah, you lose the account, you can buy a few more challenges, get fund the account, uh, fund it back, and then but again, it's a it's a long term game, right? Yeah. So yeah, and uh, don't really know the exact numbers because I don't really uh, <laughs> look it, but just trade, right? Yeah, but just in terms of risk to reward, then it would be a case where yeah, that's the usual it's very high risk to reward, yeah, usually, long term. Yeah. Yeah, long term. Yeah. In months. the short term, it could it look obviously. Yeah, you know, like quite, the, quite was the situation like was well. yeah almost break even. Okay, but you have to push it, right? Do you feel some of the prop firms that you've had issues with? Because obviously you'll know which ones they are. But like, have, would you say some of them are relatively newer or or have less of a um, customer base? So then your sort of payouts or scale of scalability yeah. is a bit risky to them, versus say an FTMO type or my forex funds type or you know uh, people in the top you know, who have very mm-hmm. large you know, revenue shares of the yeah. industry. Would you say that you're having these issues mainly with people who are sort uh, of maybe on the smaller side? Didn't really look into that, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, mostly yeah, newer companies. But there's obviously new companies that just come out and they're prepared. Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, there's been a few coming up and they just have a very good plan and mm-hmm. everything, so you don't have any issues. Um, but yeah, I think most, lo- most of my problems came with companies that aren't that big, mm. yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. And so moving into like the, obviously the personal side and moving forward then, what's the, your focus obviously, as you said, is acquiring capital, yeah. uh, building that capital and uh, building that track record. So, you know, what's your process going to be like for that? Just, uh, I have a very good friend who's into investment capital. Mm-hmm. So was he the he one who interviewed you on your yeah, channel? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Isar. So he's a very good friend of mine mm-hmm. and he went through that route starting out in trading. And I found it very interesting because there's a lot more opportunities mm-hmm. that way. Right. And it's also very much more easier. Yeah. So if I can trade funded capital, I can probably trade investment capital way easier because the targets are lower. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, for the track record, I don't know. He recommended recommended me, which I trust him. Three, five percent profit per month is mm-hmm. more than enough. Mm-hmm. Right. Six to 12 month record. Just use personal capital. Mm-hmm. Focus on that. Because, again, um, if you trade your personal capital, Maybe you don't have that much money, let's say 5K, 10K. Mm-hmm. You don't really make a living from 3, 5%, right? But you just think of it long term. Yeah, it's about yeah. the scalability. Exactly, compared to prop firms where you have more leverage, more more capital to risk, and then you can make money from that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, moving forward, we're just going to use prop firm for uh, just making money. Mm-hmm. 
how much I can uh, keep getting funding uh, at the top companies and then use that on the side to slowly build the future. Yeah. Definitely. In regards to like the strategy then, for example, so obviously on the challenges, yeah. you have the particular strategy you use for challenges, yeah. right? higher risk, yeah, low yeah, risk yeah. to reward, um, and just play the long-term vision with that. Cool. Yeah. But then when it comes to the funded accounts, and I'm guessing, and you can let me know, but I'm guessing that the strategy you use on funded accounts would be the same strategy you use for personal and then investor accounts. Yeah. Right. So then what does that strategy look like? Are you a scalper? Are you a day trader, swing trader? Oh, usually day trading. Mm -hmm. So challenge, yeah, as I said, just intraday. Mm -hmm. Maybe sometimes, let's say a swing trade, because if you're risking 4%, you can have a bigger stop loss. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, just look for that uh, reversal or continuation, have that. Uh, and yeah, for the funds account, my strategy is usually use more risk for uh, even negative risk reward. So okay. yeah, maybe I risk 2% to make 1%, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, if I know for a fact that trade can go in my way, mm -hmm. I'd rather just have a little bit more risk, even a bigger stop loss mm -hmm. and aim just to get secure some profits because Funding companies, that's the, that's the wrong thing about it. You just need to secure the next payout, mm. right? So you're not really thinking about the long-term growth. Yes. You're just thinking of the next payout, which, uh, again, is very is a very wrong way of mm -hmm. looking at it, but that's just the, the thing, right? Because on a personal account or an investor account, maybe have a negative month or a negative few yeah. weeks, mm. right? But overall, you're still bullish. Uh, you're still profitable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but on the, um, yeah, on the fund account, you kind of want to secure the next payout. Definitely. So, yeah, on the still intraday mm -hmm. so would you same. say you have like an entry drill in terms of like it's a specific uh, style of entries or, or trades so then therefore it has an edge if that makes sense so it's not like yeah obviously yeah. randomized yeah yeah it's mm -hmm. not random uh, um, obviously I as I said uh, my story I just put my head down in the charts and mm -hmm. tried to figure some st uh, some stuff out mm -hmm. so I did I did courses I watched all this information but it didn't really work for me mm -hmm. so I just found an edge as I said uh, it's most mostly based around trading times. Mm -hmm. So now they're called kill zones. Uh, London, New York, Copa, and all that, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Just a daily four-hour trend. Basic stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Here is the GPP, is the, the pairs that most of traders trade. And just focus on, uh, on catching a winning trade. Have my win rate quite big. And uh, yeah, just go from there. I don't think trading is that complicated, to be honest. Mm -hmm. People who try to complicate it, they usually don't end up being profitable. Right. Yeah, that's just right. keep it simple mm -hmm. and uh, use proper risk management and you're going to be profitable in the long run mm -hmm. right? uh, and what are your thoughts though in regards to the prop firm situation then so have you not thought about just scaling you know scaling down the style that you use in terms of uh, passing the challenges just so you can keep the funding and just you know continue to get payouts even if it's smaller or or a bit of a harder route to go down uh, well obviously now I mean if a new prop firm comes, yeah, probably I'll uh, <laughs> just to avoid any problems. But um, the thing is, with trading low risk in challenges, it requires quite a lot of time. Mm -hmm. and even if there's no maximum trading days, I'd rather focus on my my live accounts, right? Mm -hmm. And when I had 5.5 million, I had all these accounts. Every day I had a free account, right? Because the way I was doing it is just trade one account one by one. Yes. Yeah. So take a trade. Uh, get the account profit, wait, get the next account mm -hmm. and trade. Obviously, having more accounts gets you in some over trading because you want to make profit all the time. So it's good and bad. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I probably will uh, scale down on the on the risk. Yeah. yeah do, you still, get do you still do it that way now, like one at a time? Uh, yeah, with you guys, I did the same thing. <laughs> so I got funding, right? I'm uh, gonna, gonna use the low risk profile now and other prop firms now i'm not taking any any new any new accounts just gonna keep the funding that i have with the reputable companies mm -hmm. and go from there yeah so we draw from there and yeah because uh, it's just too much risk right mm -hmm. i try to go to that company again i pass maybe i fail a few challenges pass mm -hmm. it uh, funding denied or maybe payout denied you waste all this time so i'd rather just stick to that and then focus on the do you feel growth. like quite drained going through like all this you know, online drama and back and forth i'm a very transparent person so yeah i might say it has been very tough mm -hmm. uh, i have been on a quite a losing streak now <laughs> because uh, it was my forex funds first yes so i had a 600k account with them i was spending payouts around again 15 20 thousand mm -hmm. was two days before <laughs> the freeze happened so yeah coming there uh, coming from that's quite hard try to get some funding back 
maybe lost some challenges, went into some drawdown, had a losing streak, yeah. tough uh, psychology, and then this happened, mm -hmm. which was, I think, last week. And all, it was just a very, very hard time, let's say. Mm -hmm. I don't really care about it, but uh, that combined with like personal issues, you mm -hmm. know, you're tired, did the events and all of that. So yeah. it's very time consuming. Mm -hmm. Can't really focus on trading. And then you're like, oh shit, now I don't have that funding. Mm -hmm. I don't have any payout secured. Mm -hmm. uh, where, what am I going to do? I need to build a tracker, but that's going to take six to 12 months. Mm -hmm. So I still need to. So it's very, it's very hard. Trading is very hard, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, especially when you have your eggs in different baskets mm -hmm. so that's why my goal forward is just maybe even copy the same trades between the fund accounts mm -hmm. just try to to maintain it very um, straightforward and yeah. that's because it's very stressful it's very stressful yeah because equally like with your strategy on one side yeah i know people who do they might do similar on the challenges but their their strategy or mindset is keep the payout smaller to yeah, avoid yeah. being flagged not small in terms of like you know just a couple thousand or whatever but Percentage i right. think yeah in terms of like maybe below the 10 percent mark in terms of profit it's um, quite a lot <laughs> it's quite a lot yeah. yeah to be fair it might maybe be below five percent right yeah. but essentially just consistent smaller amounts yeah. obviously scaled capital so they've got like a couple million in funding and then i know one guy who trades them all right he trades them all on JCap? a copier or yeah uh, yeah. Jacob, yeah kyle so he trades them okay. all on a copier um, and yeah, he would just go for a smaller percentage return, stop trading, secure the payouts, and then continue. Yeah. Um, and then, but I also know other people who do it one at a time, but in a similar mindset. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it sounds like you're going to transition to sort of that style. Probably, yeah. Because yeah. uh, if I want to focus on the, maybe have the main capital that I want to grow, yeah. three, five percent, and then have most of my funding copied to that, mm -hmm. right? So consistent, and then have a couple more funding accounts to just go higher risk. Mm -hmm. But yeah, same thing. I uh, see a very similar pattern. All my payouts are under 2 3%. Mm -hmm. uh, may maybe even half a percent, to be honest. Half percent, one percent. I'm just focused on getting the payout every single time. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's that becomes easy because you can risk one percent, make half percent, leave the account there, get to the next one and so on, mm -hmm. and just scale the capital. But again, once you hit that uh, cap and uh, firms start to go after you, try to find stuff on you mm -hmm. to reduce your funding, then... Uh, it can be a uh, fall, let's say. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. And, you know, what is your advice to traders out there, you know, who maybe are struggling to get funded at the moment? What would you say to them? I say that to my students also, just uh, use the same. I think the, the trading style that I made for platform companies is the best. So mm -hmm. Instead of just going for one account, maybe go for four, get one, use that account to secure some profits to get you another account. Because mm -hmm. when you have one fund account, you just want to trade. If you, you see an opportuni opportunity, you may think it's good just want to keep trading it on a funding account because you don't have any any other right so just use that it's easy to get now let's say 500k in funding it's, it's quite easy right mm -hmm. platform targets has have gone down profit splits have gone up mm -hmm. trading days all of that conditions are starting to get better now after the my forex funds uh, mm -hmm. stuff prop firms are uh, really switching st uh, stuff up yeah so yeah prop firm i still is a very good opportunity for for uh, traders at the beginning you mm -hmm. know just get some profits definitely what would you advise prop firm owners out there you know just going through the situation you've gone through seeing this mff stuff seeing obviously what happened to demand for example uh what would your advice as, as someone who uses prop firms what would your advice to them be you know to, to see you know what changes or, or advice would you give them in terms of how to treat the mm -hmm. traders i mean from a business owner perspective if i was to have a funding company maybe i have one i don't know if you make it in a legit way if you actually care about traders winning because they're going to make you money why have issues with traders? Try to find profitable traders. Try to help them become funded, right? Mm -hmm. And use the fees just as uh, running costs, mm -hmm. right? But focus on finding uh, traders. But I think most prof firms now, we all know they run the same backends. Uh, don't want to say the company's name, but same backend, same data shared. So if I purchase an account there, another prof firm has my data and all of that. Mm -hmm. So try to keep it real, try to keep it for the trader, but obviously in this industry, everything is against the trader, right? Traders are just uh, cons uh, customers mm -hmm. for all these companies. Uh, but yeah, prop for mono, if I was to run one, probably get a big investment, run an algo um, with the data that I have from traders. Because I think that's, if you have a prop from company, why not use all the data that you have, mm -hmm. right? To maybe create an algo, create a system that's profitable. Even you hedge against, the losing traders mm -hmm. that's still going to be profitable right and then have some certain conditions for the profitable traders to copy them mm -hmm. 
and just use that to gain more investments. Mm-hmm. It's just like a like a uh, like a track record, right? Mm-hmm. You use the algorithm, use the fund, you have six, twelve months of record, you have profitability on all of that. Why not use that to gain more capital mm-hmm. and use the funding company just as a data company, mm-hmm. right? I think it's pretty straightforward, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, wh- what's your goal from here? Not not just from here, but like, what is your goal overall? So the next stop is obviously build the personal yeah. account, gain capital. But like, what's the goal for you, say, 10, 20, 30 years in the future? Where is it you want to end up? I don't really think that long term. Obviously, I have plans. Mm-hmm. Um, now, try to have uh, Romania, Bucharest. Again, I, I'm born there, so um, I have my trading academy there. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to build. I'm trying to transition to a more international audience. Mm-hmm. Uh, now kind of kind of set up in bucharest for uh, a year i want to uh, stay there for one more year yeah bought my first supercar there so mm-hmm. <laughs> it was quite quite fun and then maybe next year start moving towards dubai because i think this is the future mm-hmm. if i have the track record everything build that become a hedge fund manager mm-hmm. then maybe create my own team to run things to trade and all of that start building more businesses because uh, trading is just i don't want to be a trader Mm-hmm. I think that's um, that's a tough career. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's a very stressful career. Obviously, mm-hmm. uh, starting out trading was the only way to make quick money. Mm-hmm. Uh, use prop firms, use some money, and then start building. Mm-hmm. So it's quite a fast way to make uh, money. It's a hard way to make money, but it's a skill that keeps you going. Mm-hmm. So just focus. Maybe next, uh, yeah, five. I mean, five years is a very long time. Mm-hmm. It's a very long time. Even one year is a long time. Yeah. If you it's use a very it. long time, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm only 24, but last four years just went past so mm-hmm. fast, right? <laughs> but the growth was really, was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's my goal. Just build a track record, start going through the investment route, mm-hmm. maybe expand, not just trading forex. Yeah, because there's others, equities, real estate, all of that. If you have a fund, if you make profit, money is gonna come to you, right? Yeah, and yeah, uh, trading wise, obviously, a lot of traders have educational companies mm-hmm. like courses all of that i've tried to provide the best best quality i can but with courses it's a whole different story because you can offer everything to a person but uh, you can't guarantee their success right yeah, yeah. I, I think you have an education program as mm-hmm. well and you saw that right it's nice to help people but some people don't deserve and don't want to be helped so you can't really do anything about most it most people just they're not willing to put in the work it's like you yeah. said there like in terms of a year like it's a long time so long but time most people ago. don't feel that way and most yeah. people will waste a year i used to that's, so it's not like i'm saying that i've always you know just been working hard i've consistently yeah. worked hard but there's a difference between working hard every day which i would say guarantees success Obviously. um doesn't mean it guarantees it in a year but it guarantees success if you keep doing it yeah. versus doing it for like one month every three months you know exactly it's just about the discipline and consistency mm-hmm. the thing that i said that really helped me mm-hmm grow the skill was just doing the same thing and mm-hmm. I still do it to this day. Yeah. Like, you see. What are your thoughts to people though who say about people selling courses? You know, if you're profitable, why do you need to sell a course? What do you think when people say Again, that? Again, I'm transparent, so it's just an extra income, mm-hmm. right? If you have your skill, why not use that to mm-hmm. help other people and also grow your business, grow mm-hmm. your brand. Um, but there are people just just trade market there, just use marketing to mm-hmm. market the, the courses, which uh, again, you need to look up who you're learning from. Mm-hmm. Or how are they trading? Do they are they legit? Mm-hmm. And also, are their results that you can replicate? Mm. So that's the thing I say to most people when they look for a mentor. Not just trading, anything. Does he have results that you can also have? Because mm-hmm. if you look up to a very successful investor, that maybe his parents were very you know very successful, and you look up to them, like can you replicate that? Yeah how can you get that money right mm-hmm. uh, that's why i recommend educating from traders who trade prop firms because those results cannot be really manipulated right mm-hmm. payouts and all of that if, if you have the stats it's something that everyone can do because mm-hmm. uh, i know different so um, yeah if you sell courses i think that's fine um, i think you also buy courses maybe in other areas yeah so if you want to learn about, I don't know, editing, maybe you buy a course, which mm-hmm. is perfectly fine, right? You learn, you lose the years of hard work, mm-hmm. years of stress and all of that, get a straightforward process, just go from there. Courses are not for everyone, of course, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you can buy a course, but that doesn't guarantee anything, right? But yeah, for me, it's just something that I like to do. Um, like the event I did mm-hmm. wasn't really worth my time, let's say, 
didn't really gain much, but it was a nice experience. It was nice really seeing people that are interested and happy to mm -hmm. learn to learn stuff. So for me, I think yeah, I, I like doing it, but it's also a very good uh, business to grow on the side. Right? And I think you talked about that, right? Because trade uh, education, uh, educa like an education company brings you some revenue and makes you more focused on trading. Yeah, right? it, well, it can do both. It can do both. And then also like with trading, it fulfills you financially. But other yep. than that, it doesn't do much else. Well, the connections you build and yeah. the, to be fair, like I can travel here to Dubai and yeah, I, have, yeah. I have multiple friends here who are very close to me. Yeah. And, but they joined their you know, community years ago. Same mm -hmm. with like, uh, when I go to Canada, you know, same you thing, have, I've uh, stayed at one of their houses. There, yeah. yeah. Um, and those things are priceless. You know, yeah, those it's more things, like a family. Yeah, yeah exactly. And um, you won't get that from just trading. You know, just trading, you, you can just trade by yourself and then that's it, stay in your room and, and yeah. never leave. So there are many benefits to it. And I do understand people's points of, in terms of like, you don't need it. Yeah, you don't necessarily need it. No, but you can put the hard work in. Like. Yeah, but with the trading side, it's like, it's volatile in terms of, even yeah, as a consistent could. trader, there's no guarantee you're going to make a money month, every yeah. month. So by having, whether it's a course, it doesn't have to be a course. A course is just one that- a service, yeah. Yeah, there's one that is, uh, there's a demand for a lot of the time and that's why people do it. People are asking you to make a course, yeah, exactly, yeah. right? So therefore you can do that. But it could be anything. It could be real estate. It could be any other business. Um, because you have to remember as well, people assume just because you have a course that you make money. People can no. have a course and not make any money. Yeah, people can exactly. make a course and do it very poorly and therefore no one wants to join it. Yeah. Or if you do it right though, people don't realize how much time and energy it does take. Yeah, exactly. Right? So it does take time and energy to put into it and to make it good quality and to you know answer questions most of all. Um, because if you're not doing those things, then of course then it's probably not going to be very good and people won't want to join it anyway. Yeah, but people are never happy, are they? Yeah, right. this is also so you true. can make the best course. They're mm -hmm. still gonna say something. You make a poor course. They're still gonna. It comes out something. to people's mindset. I think they join thinking it's like a golden ticket. Like yeah, if I join exactly, this one. Yeah. I'm gonna guaranteed find the golden success. nugget. Yeah. yeah, when really it's like once you're willing to do the work that's necessary, regardless of who you go to. It's like yeah. ICT, for example. Everyone's like, oh, ICT is amazing. But yeah. look how many people don't make money using ICT. Not because of ICT. I think a lot of people, yeah. yeah. It's because obviously they don't, they're don't. they not willing to put in the work that's necessary, especially with ICT because yeah. there's so much of it. Um, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, my thoughts on that are just, it's too complicated. Mm. Trading needs to be simple, mm. right? So find something that works for you, create an edge. It's not that hard, just find a trading style, back test it, forward test it, and you're gonna be profitable. But going back to courses and uh, stuff like that is very, sometimes for me it's very hard to, because obviously to sell a service, yeah. you also need marketing. Mm -hmm. And in our industry, you know how marketing works, right? You need to uh, show flashy stuff mm -hmm. and all of that, which it doesn't really represent me. I just like, because if you can make, let's say, uh, 10K in a week trading, yeah. having one or two trades, mm -hmm. to make that through courses, you need to sell maybe, I don't know, 30, 40 courses, mm -hmm. which is very hard <laughs> in terms of marketing. So it's mm -hmm. a very hard process. Is this something record. that you feel like you'll do? Because I know like you got the watch, for example. Yeah. And then you said you bought a supercar. So yeah. is it something that you're going to transition to, you think? Or you just think? I don't know. I, I did that just because I don't really usually, usually pay myself. How do you fit in a McLaren? That's uh, the real that, question. That one is, yeah, just like... How do you? How do Because I don't <laughs> fit in a McLaren. So how the hell do you fit yeah, in one? Um, the one I got is a bit has like a panoramic you roof. That's uh, yeah, I wanted to get one modified. I was, I was asking around, let's, can you modify the seats and everything? But that one I fit in all right, like just a tiny bit, <laughs> which is hard. But obviously, yeah, it's it's very hard. I was looking at supercars for quite mm. a while. But you I just need like a G-Wagon, you do. You just need like a big Yeah, but it's just SUV. boring, right? It's just know, boring because uh, <laughs> you can buy a G-Wagon and stuff like that. It doesn't really, because I want to get something for marketing as well. Of course, yeah. When is people see a supercar, like, yeah, he's legit, mm -hmm. right? Or he has a watch, yeah, he's legit. He makes money. Um, Happiness-wise, I don't think it made me that happy. Mm -hmm. I think after a while, you kind of kind of lose the happiness mm -hmm. in it. You're more happy just growing. Mm -hmm. So um, the McLaren came with all the drama. <laughs> so I was more focused on that and more upset about that than uh, being happy about the car, right? Of I want to fix yeah. that issue. It's interesting before. how they uh, happen at the same time. Though. Yeah, it happened. Maybe bad luck, or maybe just the universe trying to test me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. You never so, uh, know. Keep uh, moving forward. Um, can't do anything about you. Can't yeah. send the McLaren back. <laughs> <laughs> it's paid, yeah, yeah. paid. Yeah, that's it. But um, obviously, moving on, we're going to go into like quick fire questions. So we just have like a handful <coughs> of uh, yeah. questions that we ask at the end. Um, one is, you know, if you could meet anyone in the past uh, or even the present, but like anyone, famous or not, right. who would it be and why? 
I never thought of that, to be honest. I don't really think about it. Uh, I kind of lost my uh, thing for role models. Mm -hmm. um, had a, a thing happen to me recently where I was looking up to some to some individual for a very long time since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And that guy ended up scamming me. Oh, wow. Indirect, right? So let's imagine five, six years, you try to replicate, try to be successful, and then he scams you, mm. right? And you're like... My my biggest role model is, is a scammer. Well, who can I look up to? So from the past, don't really really know. Maybe mm. some of the greatest traders, greatest risk managers. I don't know. Never thought of that, so I don't have yeah. an answer. <laughs> so what happened there though? Is, it, is that was that in the FX space or just generally? No, like generally, generally, yeah, yeah. A big, uh, a very popular and big guy. Uh, just it was like most like a networking stuff. Do they live in Romania? No, 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 no. Is I know Romanians are scammers, but no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It was a worldwide wow. hero, let's say. Yeah. Yeah. How have you handled that then? Yep. Uh, it was quite sad. Obviously, the looking up part, and then you get scammed. And like, uh, it kind of makes you think about it, right? Even if that guy scammed him, and a anyone can scam, right? So I, I became way Would more. Would people careful. know who it is? Yeah, probably, yeah. Do you want to say who it is? Uh, no, not really. Mm. He's a very, uh, very big guy on YouTube also. Mm. He had a private group, an NFT group. People don't know it because it's very well hidden. Mm. So it was kind of, yeah. It's the Gents Concrete Club, if you know. I know who you're so, talking about. That. Yeah, yeah, that was the, the thingy, yeah. Really? Yeah. People don't know about it, but uh, yeah. I mean, money-wise, wasn't a big loss. Mm. But it's so what was it a case of then? They took money, but then didn't deliver? Yeah, exactly. Mm. Didn't deliver and try to ch uh, again very manipulate a lot of manipulation, right? <clears throat> they sell something and they, they try to switch things around, shove it in your face. You need to be okay with that, even if it isn't what you what you want. Mm. It just shows the true character of, of someone, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's that was a uh, the, the thing. Fair enough. You know, yeah. it's sad when these things happen. That's what they always say: don't meet your heroes. You know. You'll be disappointed. Yeah, just look up to them and leave it there. <laughs> yeah, just stay there, yeah. <laughs> there, yeah. Um, final question for you then. This one should be fun because you're very tall, so I don't know who you would choose. But um, <laughs> if there was a charity boxing fight in the world, well, I, I think I know who you'll choose now that I think about it. But um, if there's a charity boxing fight in the FX space uh, and you had to pick one opponent, who would it be? In the FX space? Just or just any space, any space if you for want. For fun or... Uh, yeah, I saw you ask this question quite mm. a lot. I don't know, I don't have a lot of friends in the fx space but it doesn't have to be friends to fight yeah. someone even better if it's your enemy <laughs> my enemy mm -hmm. i will fight a uh, lumber roll for that he's your enemy <laughs> he scanned me once uh, when i was first starting well, yeah sorry to say that. i know you had a podcast it's but fine, obviously, yeah, yeah. it was uh, my first signal channel bot back four or five years ago mm. it was a long time and uh, yeah it's, you know how it is you buy something they don't deliver mm -hmm. And the thing was, I was trying to get a refund because they said you have a refund and they were just moving you around people until mm. the 30 days passed and you got nothing. So that was, I don't know. I would fight, and also I would fight Roger Banks. <laughs> and Roger Banks. Just for fun, yeah. Because I know tall. he's tall, yeah. Yeah, he's tall. That I'm be excited fight, to meet yeah. him and uh, let's see, yeah. <laughs> you meet him and punch him let's straight see. away. Just for fun. Man. I, I know he's a fun guy. I know he's a wow. fun guy. We yeah. took a turn there at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hey, see today. Good. That's what yeah. we're here for. But um, One for fun and one for... Uh, like yeah, well, we're gonna have to set it up now. So when I call you, we we do the matchmaking. Yeah, have to sure, do sure. I'm gonna try. But but um, but Andrew, no, I appreciate you coming down. Yeah, I wish you all the best as well for the future. No doubt, we can probably do this again. Hopefully, maybe we'll do it in Romania. Amazing. Maybe we'll do it in the UK. You can come to Romania. Yeah, yeah I have a very nice place to do that. Yeah, we'll sort it out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, have a nice time in Dubai. All congratulations for everything that you're doing too. Uh, your links will be in the description below. Everyone, thank you for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe. Drop a comment with uh, you know your biggest takeaway from this episode. And make sure you subscribe. By now, I'm not sure when this comes out. Maybe we're closing in on 100K. Maybe we passed 100K. But as always, thank you all and take care.